Because the words that you select here, and it is very careful, you have to carefully word your thing. My father, and you guys have known these stories, my father was an HR director at Sears for 25 years. I've been mock interviewed more times than I can shake a stick at, and every time I've thrown in my resume, it's got red pen all over it. I could even hand it to him today, probably could still have red pen all over it. It is a style thing I've now determined. But I'll tell you, the one thing that really hit home is I realized the number of times that I said assistant, participated in, was along the ride, along for the ride. That's really what you're saying, is I let someone else do the work and I was there. So you might as well just say I was one of 20 on a team of people, because that's really what you just told me. You have to select the things that say, I am different. I am great. And I will tell you, like I've told you throughout this entire series, it is not bragging if it is a fact. You ought to be extremely proud that you were selected to do that. So you need to make sure that it reads that beyond just participate. It is, I was one of a select few to be able to participate. So now I have your attention with the number. It shows that I'm a solid, consistent performer. So if you've achieved number one, how many times? In the last 12 months, have you achieved all your goals? Achieved my, what was achieved my incentive 10 out of 12 months? Selected to be an all-star three out of the last four years? Consistently among the top 10 within the division? Top 10 within my team? Whatever works best for your accomplishments that are out there. But you really need to make it stick out because everyone else is going to have, here's the job description, one resume. Because what that means is someone down the hall, you can't assume that they know what you're talking about anyway. In every job I've been in, the names change three months later anyway. Do you want to have to keep going back to your resume and updating the name on it? No, put it in a generic form that makes sense to people. When I say collections, you think people who are past due. Don't worry about whether it's some jargon that's out there, vernacular. Don't get caught up in that. As long as it explains something well enough that they can understand what you're doing. If you say I am a team manager, it makes sense to most people. You have to tell your whole picture. Don't let anyone stifle your resume. It is yours to have in a whole. Now, what's the right number? Is it one page, two pages, three pages, seven pages? What's appropriate? Okay, what's appropriate? See, you and I had this conversation. <laughs> there is no right or wrong answer. Because I was told at one point it's one year or one page. And then I heard after a while it can be two pages. And then I spoke to some people in HR, they're like, we don't care. <laughs> Just don't make it so long that we get lost in it. Remember, it's your book. If it's worth reading, I'm gonna keep reading. I will tell you my preference is anything over three pages is probably too long. And by the time I get to the latter part of the pages, I'm probably losing it a little bit. So you want to keep all your meaty stuff up front, but you also don't want to discredit any of the work that you've done in the past that got you to where you are. You've grown from who you are because of that work that's there. Now, I had some summer jobs that finally fell off, thank goodness, because that lifeguard thing wasn't really working out for me. <laughs> <laughs> but you can grow out of them if they are not pertinent to who you were. That three-week job I had in the bookstore in college, that didn't work out too well either didn't happen to make the resume. But I was still in college. I'm not worried about the gap there. I had a three-week gap there. But I'm talking about it's your whole story. So if you've done some stuff on the outside, make sure that it's in there. A buddy of mine said, hey, take a look at my resume. When he had lost his job, he was without a job for two years. And I looked at the resume, and the first thing I said is, you're one of my best friends. I've known that you've been in the military reserves for at least 15 years. Where is it? I don't know. I didn't put it on there. Military reserves can be called to go to war. He's a leader. He is taking one weekend a month to do this. He has taken 
weeks of training to be who he is in the military, commitment to the country, commitment to himself, commitment to his family, and yet nobody would have known. Does that just scream leadership? Does that just scream commitment? Does it just, just scream a lot of different messages? Let it come out. Let it speak for you. And we've got that added on. I don't know if it was coincidence if he got a job a couple months later, but his, his resume was absolutely much stronger because of it. How many of you do community service? Okay, that's not a loaded question for you to say. I have to raise my hand when I do that. But the point is, do you do a walk-a-thon once a year because your boss tells you you have to? Is that really volunteering? No. But if you invest some time, a couple times, it's worth adding on to. If you commit financially, but a lot, and it takes time to get maybe raise funds for it, absolutely. <coughs> now, there are some things that will eventually fall off. Like somebody said, well, I was a volunteer about 10 years ago here. And I said, well, how important is that, that, that 10 years ago? Does it mold who you are? Is it a piece of clay that says this is who you are? And they said, well, actually, yeah, it is. Because it got me started here, and then I started to get more involved in other groups over there, and now I'm one of the people who's overseeing and started the military support group. And I said, yeah, keep it. <laughs> you see how you have to pull that string all the way through to say, should I keep it or not? This isn't a matter of putting everything on a piece of paper and say, I'm done. It's let me put everything that's on paper that's important to me that tells my story. That book I'm writing on my resume, how important is that to you? Where I get a little concerned is when I see this list of systems that people have, and it's this long, and first of all, each one is a bullet of one or two words, so look how much space is being taken up, and look how much wasted space is over here on paper. That's why I went with the merger of the bullet paragraphs, because I don't want to waste space. Now, I don't want it all scrunched together, and I want things to pop out to my eyes. But when you have a list of 10 things that say I'm good in Microsoft Office, good in Microsoft Visio, good in Microsoft PowerPoint, and it's this long, you're wasting space over here. Maybe you can lay it across or add it in semicolons or something along those lines that, that puts a better picture on there for you. Be very careful with the internal systems that are very specific and specialized here. Instead of listing the name of that system, list the description. Because software can be updated. Software can be, if you know how to program software, that's fantastic. That's great. But put that description in there that you know how to program software. That will get you further along that I'm really good at X system. Because somebody down the hall is going to say, what's X system? Somebody's going to throw out in another, outside the company, What's that? And then you're going to have to explain it. If you put the description there and give someone a little bit of a taste of it, then it can become a conversation starter versus a question of what's that, which is a much different approach. Because what you're, when you're writing this resume, what you're trying to do is to almost create the questions that can be asked of you in the middle of an interview. So go to the last page of my resume. Tell me what's sticking out. Personal. How many of you have been told not to put personal stuff on a resume and don't talk about yourself in an interview? Well, as an interviewer, I'm not allowed to ask you personal things. How far do you travel? How many kids do you have? What's your marital status? We can't. However, as someone who is being interviewed, why can't I put that stuff down? What am I telling you by saying that I, um, I run 20 miles a, a week, that I'm married, my salary is negotiable? What am I telling you? Healthy and stable. I am healthy. On paper, I'm stable. <laughs> <laughs> Potentially flexible. <laughs> Driven. Driven, committed. Mm -hmm. 
I listed the book there. So it shows that I can balance work, life, and other stuff, extracurricular activities. Those two or three lines tell you a whole story about me. And as an interviewer, I'm not going to sit there and say, wow, how many kids do you have? Because I can't. But what I am going to say is, oh, you run? So do I. I, I coach cross country. Now you've established a relationship because your resume has told you a little bit of something and stuff about yourself. You have to have this thing come alive. You have to bring it alive. You have to differentiate yourself from everyone else who's out there. And you differentiate yourself by not worrying about any unwritten rules that are out there. Break the rules. You don't have to put your personal things on there, but have you ever seen it before? Some have, some have. What are the extracurricular activities or volunteer activities telling you? You have interests outside of work and you're committed to the community. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What's all my stuff before that tell me? All that stuff before that says, guess what? I can perform well and do this stuff. See how my picture's starting to come together on paper? <clears throat> it's really about putting those pieces together. Don, I know that you like to play the guitar and you're in a band. Why shouldn't that be on there? If you can say that you balance that, if you can say you write your own music, I could tell you, research will tell you, those that know how to read musical notes are a lot brighter and sharper than those who don't. It's a fact. If you want to be able to start telling that story about yourself, um, you're starting to generate those interesting things about you, so you are beyond a job description on paper. 